tonight for Pink Out for Cancer. We're going to honor those who have fought breast cancer. Our honor Every team trains hard. Every team prepares to win. But when U.S. Army soldiers take the field, it's best if the other guys don't bother showing up. See if you have what it takes at GoArmy.com slash team. One thing about Kern Schools is you get to do your banking your way. I still like writing checks and visiting my branch. For me, it's all about the mobile, and I still do everything online or through the ATM. So no matter Welcome back, everybody, to the Kern High Network. This is Kern High School District's live exclusive coverage of high school athletics here in Kern County, and tonight it happens to be football, Friday night farm football in the outskirts of Bakersfield proper. This is county football at its best. We are at Shafter High School, one of the most perfect cities in California. Fantastic place. Always enjoy coming here. They're welcoming in from just up the road the Kennedy Thunderbirds from Delano High School. This is going to be something to, set, to help set the table with me. My partner, Rick Van Horn. I'm Vance Palm. Great to be here tonight. Miguel Garcia, our director, producer, and none other than Kevin Willie, the godfather of local cameraman here tonight. Rick, let's bring you in. Special evening tonight. It's senior night, so we've had the senior procession. This is also an evening where we um, experience the peak of sports that we um, around the world celebrate and to fight and to continue to get cures for breast cancer. So there's a lot of festivities going on tonight, Rick, but pretty soon it's going to be a very, very hard fought football team from two really, really good county teams. I'm an Arvin guy. I came from the outskirts of the big city of Bakersfield. These are two county guys. So what in the world are we doing with a city slicker like you from Bakersfield High School, great to have you here, Rick. What a nice football game tonight. Guilty as charged. And I got I to throw in there, I'm an adopted east side blade. So, uh, yeah, I'm a city guy, but th this is the county versus county, city versus city, as you said before. This is the city of Delano against the city of Shafter. And uh, this is something that Shafter's used to. You know, you get that next week, they got to go down the road about 10 miles to a hornet's nest called Wasco. So this is a prime, a primer to get them ready for, you think this is big? It, and it's ironic, it, well, it's ironic that you're saying that, Rick, because tonight it's two undefeated teams going after it for the supremacy of this league. And then they still have this waiting for them next week. Enough of that. Let's talk about tonight. Man, this is a big one, Rick. You've got the Robert F. Kennedy Thunderbirds, uh, you know, at the Shafter home vibe. There's so few schools like it in this community. Um, everybody likes to feel they've got a really good, strong home crowd. But, man, in the city of Shafter, it is big. And let's sit uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy our uh, national anthem. It's going to be performed tonight by the Shafter General Marching Band. Let's listen in. Once again.
again, everybody. Welcome to the Kern High Network's live exclusive coverage of high school sports here in Kern County. The Kern High School District brings this to you. I'm Vance Palm, Rick Van Horn next to me tonight. We're at Shafter High School welcoming in all of you to enjoy this really, really good football game ahead of us. Rick's done his homework as always. I caught a few scoops tonight as I was purchasing homemade, fresh, wonderful burritos from the Shafter Mecha Club. And we've all got stories to tell about our Shafter experiences, our friends from Shafter, Robert F. Kennedy, still growing newer school in an old old town but tonight regarding football you have maybe the speedier generals against a more physical thunderbirds you have a very well-known quarterback in chapter and a team in the thunderbirds who have an up-and-coming star just some of the storylines that's bringing my partner rick van horn to set the table for this kickoff well we we know We've heard about Shafter these last two years, and we don't know a whole lot about Kennedy, but Kennedy's no stranger to, to winning. I tell you, they've won 49 games in the last five years, dating back to 2014 when they were 9-3. In 2015, they were 10-4, so they're no stranger to this position. That's the voice of Rick Van Horn, and we are ready to go. Like we said, we have storylines tonight. We'll get to them. Excited to call this game. A lot of great action here tonight. Here's the kickoff. The Generals will receive. Bobbled off the chest of the return man at the 10. He may be in trouble, but he cuts back up against the grain. Salvages a little bit out of it. But ooh, what a dangerous play out there. Jackson Sanchez had it bounce off the center of his chest on a night like tonight when emotions are high, nerves are running crazy. Boy, oh boy, that's a way to start off the game if you're the kickoff return man. Yeah, eliminate mental mistakes, penalties, and of course, the ever ready turnovers. You've got to, especially if you're Shafter, and they're a throwing team, averaging nearly 300 yards a game throwing. They cannot turn the ball over and give it back to a run-oriented Kennedy. The quarterback that Rick speaks of having produced all those numbers, Alex Aguilar, behind center. They start off with this quad set over here. Could be a double pass. No, it's not. But it's a great, great pass play, and he's breaking loose already. Jackson Sanchez up to the 37-yard line. He says, hey, hold on, you announcers. I've got hands. Don't sweat it. What a great play. Woo! They brought that diamond package out. Certainly caught Kennedy off guard. First and 10. They stay on the ground. And there's a flag on this second play and a late flag at the very end of the play. So the first one would kind of have us all thinking maybe a hold. The second one, Rick, at the end of the play went flying straight up in the air. That's usually maybe somebody uh, chipping away down there early in the game. The umpire holding the football that will mark the yards off is looking south, which would indicate that even with the holding call, they didn't get anything to try to equalize it. They're both on the generals. Well, that flag was for holding against Shafter. Oh. And a personal foul against I take it back. So they do the old walk back, and then they do the walk forward. <laughs> they got a great public address announcer. Just awesome, awesome guy. Loved by the fans. Visiting and, of course, home. Does a great job. First and three. Aguilar drops back quickly, fires quickly, and it's caught out there by Marco Rodriguez. And Marco Rodriguez gets inside the 50 to the 47 yard line and Rick you know a lot about quarterbacks he's got a great one here yeah you do you know in this kind of offense you need a basically you need a shortstop to run this kind of offense and they've got the perfect guy in Alex Aguilar quick snap they get it back out here to Sanchez Sanchez again looks for some downfield blocking this time a really nice job out there by Ever Molina Second and eight. 
second and seven says that. You'll be able to enjoy the PA announcer with us this evening as we weave a football game together. Second and seven, they say. Sanchez right in front of him, and flags fly way out on the far side, and it is on the side judge by the Kennedy bench, and it is a false start against Shafter, and it will come back. Against Shafter, that'll cost them five yards, we're going to call that second. Twelve. Neither team has lost. The Thunderbirds of Kennedy, 8-0, 4-0 in league. Same record for the Shafter Generals. Something we'll have to give tonight. Sanchez goes in motion and then stops. A double pair out there. And he fires and it's missed. It is dropped. Pass intended for number five, Marco Rodriguez. Incomplete. That's going to make it. Third You're going to see Kennedy to run a version of what you see at Bakersfield High. Mario Milan coached there for a year under Paul Gola. Call it the 3-3 stack, whatever you want to do. But you're going to see these guys moving around quite a bit. Um, all standing up. Third and 12. More action on the line by the Generals. And Coach Perucci below us right here. Right below me at about the 42-yard line. He is not pleased with his offensive line. They get a couple of big plays, they strike quickly, they move the ball well, and then it just gets stalled here in the first quarter. First drive. I don't think Shafter's worried too much. As long as they've got the ball, they've got quick strike capability. Aguilar drops back, looks like a screen play, is a screen play, and it's dropped out here by Isaac Enriquez. Enriquez was looking at some real estate. He said, I'm gone. Oops. Doggone it. Would have been a great play. But a drop pass, and Aguilar put it right there. Well-designed play, coach. So you have the quarterback slash punter, and the Thunderbirds have a man deep. What will he do? He will. He punts it. It's a wobbler, and it looks as though he'll make an attempt. He does. Hangs on to the football, but it's Molina, and the whistles finally blow, and we'll get a chance to see this Thunderbirds yeah, offense by and the exciting Molina quarterback. By the Shafter punt team. Yeah, you're going to see a form of, it's almost it's like a, a veer Kennedy offense. You're going to see a lot line. of running. Looks like a little wing tee. They've got a great tailback in Tyreek Walker. He's already ran for 1,200 yards this year. He's Woo! averaging nine points, nine yards a carry. Uh, and that's almost a first down every time he touches the ball. Quarterback is David Estrada. They start out on the ground and how about this? Francisco Medina. Woo! Hand off to number 28. He's kind of their workhorse. He's gained about 500 yards but mostly between the tackles. In fact, mostly in the A-gap. Aaron Rios, the wide receiver, comes out here to the bottom of your screen. Estrada pitches it. This time, it is to Walker. Walker cut down with a great tackle by Pedro Avila. Ooh, what a nice play by the senior outside linebacker. The thing Kennedy has to avoid is third and long because they do not throw the ball very well or they don't like to throw the ball. Estrada can throw it, but doesn't like to. They like to run the ball. Big, big offensive line. Estrada hurries them up to the football and to sweep around the left side and some really nice footwork. Oh, flag probably is going to nullify this really nice run by Jan Sani Sandoval. Jan Sandoval really moving well there, but flags come out. Just underway here, first quarter, 9.41 to go to. Great atmosphere here at Shafter High School. Breast Cancer Awareness Month has the entire football field in pink on all the down markers in the end zone, all the cheerleaders. Like a penalty for holding against Kennedy and a face masking. Face masking against Shafter. Those penalties offset. offset. So back to second and eight. That is a ton of cheerleaders, let me tell you.
Whoa, there is a lot happening here tonight, Rick. Both bands going at it. Second and eight. The Schaptor defense muscles up. Rafael Zamudio. Exactly what Coach Perucci and Sean Lozano, their defensive coordinator, wanted to do, put them in third and long, third and seven. One thing that's got overlooked with that, that such a great offense the Shafter has is their defense. They've only given up 48 points this year. Could be third down and seven to go. Wow, that's about a little less than a touchdown a game. Third and seven, big test here for the Thundercats. Estrado lobs it out, throws it out. It's a wobbler, and it's caught. Oh, goodness. It's a long bomb down to the five-yard line. No flags anywhere. The ball started to wobble a little bit, and it may have turned into a blessing as it gets hauled in. First and goal from the five, Coach Van Horn. Well, we were just talking about they don't like to throw, but when they do, they got a guy, Tyreek Walker. Wow. Like, hey, I don't like to wear a tux. Yeah. But when I do. <laughs> yeah. Estrada. Fumble. Balls on the ground. Picked up in the 12-yard line. That's it. That's Aguilar. I'm looking for flags. There are none. I see none. Aguilar says, jump on, fellas. Jump on my back, fellas. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you to the promised land here. So a big strip on a first and goal from the five after a super long bomb. And just like that. Touchdown, Generals. Here's the PAT by Baruch Valencia. It's up and it's good. So if you're just getting to your watching and listening device, 8-12 remaining in the first. A 7-0 score, Shafter. But about a minute ago, in real time, their backs were up against the wall in their deep in their own area as the Thunderbirds of Kennedy had a first and goal. And on that first play, strip superstar quarterback and two-way starter defenseman Alex Aguilar picks it up and he's off. Well, good teams find ways to score, whether it's offense, defense, special teams. If things aren't clicking on offense, defense is there to pick you up. That's exactly what they did. It just happens that he's a two-way guy, so. So he got inside the three-yard line on the carry, and they're saying Aguilar picked it up on the two to give him a 98-yarder. And that defense that you were speaking about probably has heard a lot of well-deserved, well-earned respect in the media for their quarterback. But because he plays on the other side of the ball with them, they're like, hey, he's part of us. Right. So he gets the score. Now they're even probably hungrier, Rick. This defense gets to go right back on that side of the yeah. football and get it rolling again. And when you're a ball control offense like Kennedy, turnovers are your arch enemy. They're going to get a chance to recover and get right back into it. Ball is taken by Molina at the 15-yard line. And Molina hit hard. And they finally blow the whistle. But uh, I believe he got up to about the 24 yard line. And kickoff return brought down by number 84, Baruch Valencia. Eight oh five remains in this first quarter. 
I'm Vance Palm, joined by Rick Van Horn. Our director producer is Miguel Garcia and East High Blade. Rick's a driller, I'm a bear. Kevin Willie, our cameraman's a Viking. Hard count by Estrada. Might pick up five the easy way. No, take that little kickstart to this drive, Rick. Like Traction, Factor. progression. They just got to get something five. going here and not let that big early hiccup stay in their head too long. They've got to settle it down. Big night, senior night, like you said. Estrada, option keeper. Eight, Good for four yards and maybe even more. No, he moves the sticks. Wow. He said, you know, Shafter, senior That's night, got a lot going tonight. 8-0, eight 8-0. No, eight no. Biggest game in this stadium in quite a while. And this is the last big game, unless they play the Valley Championship. They're going to go into reconstruction next year, so they're going to be on the road all 10 games next year. Hand off to number 20, Jan Canny Sandoval. Brought Sandoval down picks up five. Number 11, Joey Sanchez. Again, as Rick just stated, this football stadium going to renovation, reconstruction. It's going to be a jewel out here in the northwest part of the county. For those of you watching in from out of state, maybe friends and relatives playing tonight or nephews or grandsons of relatives. We're about two hours north of Los Angeles as Walker carries it for a couple of yards. Come down, from, come up from LA, come down the grapevine to get into the heart of the San Joaquin Valley. And we're about 60 miles up from the base. Wonderful community. Third and two, here's a big one here. They try to take it right up the middle and I don't think they get it. Boy. They try to jam it up there, Coach, with Walker out here as a decoy. And now it brings up fourth and two with 6.41 to go in the first quarter. And with Schaffer just scoring. Officials call a timeout. You and I were talking prior to going live about incredibly rich coaching history that's gone on here, Rick. Yeah, chapter high, you know, you, you can go all the way back to Jan Stubbe, Mike Keese, Manuel Garcia, wow. one for you. Eric Smith, head coach here, John Myers, Brian Nixon, Ricky Ishida, and now Gerald Perucci. That is, that's some healthy stock right there, man. Yeah. And now Mario Milan in his first year at Kennedy, starting his ascent up the coaching ladder and doing a great job. But here's a big fourth and one. And it looks like they get it, they do. And that packed outside of the stadium is making some noise. In the art of full transparency, my day job. My office is located in Delano. It's been many, many hours a year in Delano. And I have more than a few work-related individuals and their kids and their family all here tonight and or going to be watching later. Delano, very excited about this game tonight in their Sister City to the South, Shafter. Quick little look down the sidelines. It's thrown out there where nobody could get it. Luis Perez was the intended receiver. Wow. So it came out and tried to strike quickly there, Rick, after that first down. They did. They'll, they, you know, like to throw on early downs. 
Chapter was in man coverage, so they thought they could get the fade off on him. Second and 10 this time. Oh, goodness. A big, big hit by Jose Ortiz. And he had some help in there by Nathan Gonzalez. Francisco Medina brought down by Nate Gonzalez and Jose Ortiz. Looks like they lost about a yard on that. That's going to be third and 11. Jose Ortiz, 6'4", 200, wears the jersey number 54, and they got all of that. Here's third and 11 for the Thunderbirds. Looks like a screenplay better be overthrows the receiver incomplete. And now fourth and long midfield. They're going to have to punt it away, so now We'll get to see the Shocker general offense with a little bit of steam. See what they'll do. Talked about, you know, Kennedy wanting to stay out of those third and long because throwing is not their forte. And we saw it there. Oh, nice here's a punt. nice punt. Here's a beauty if it stays in that corner, will it? Oh, it does. That right there. That's Carson Olivich right the, there. Uh, what a nice punt the out there First by Laredo there. Beltron. Beltron, it's like, a, like a five iron there. What was that, six he iron? Really no, that came in, that came in to stop it. I'd say a, maybe a six. What a beauty. That's exactly what they needed right there, Rick. Nice punt. I mean, no chance of a return. It'll be first and 10 from the seven yard line. Shafter leads seven to zero. Beautiful night out here in the northwest part of the county. Well, you're seeing two, two well-coached teams here, and you can always tell by special teams if the teams are well-coached. And these are, um, as you saw that, not a whole lot of mistakes. Whoa, some fantastic running. Still on his feet. Goodness. Pedro Avila. Five three hundred and forty five pound senior looks like Barry Sanders out there, man. That was Maurice Jones drew there. Wow, some incredible footwork and a quick snap by the generals and very little time for these Thunderbirds to react and recover. He's the second leading rusher on the Shafter team. Of course, Aguilar, who's also the leading second passer and, and the leading rusher. The thing five, about Avila, he, he averages 11 yards a carry. Well, I can see why. Yeah. Doesn't do it much, but when he does, it's effective. He's hard to catch. Second and six, ball is at the 35 yard line. Trying to get the midfield. Pitch option, he keeps it, and nice job by the Thunderbirds. No gain for Aguilar, third and six, 4.15 remaining in the first quarter. Talking to Coach Barucci this week is a little, little worried. He's starting two new linemen this week. He lost two linemen during the Arvin game, so he's starting two new young kids. He likes their athletic ability, but they lack playing time, so that this is this is the first time under fire. Super hard count by Aguilar, and he has Ricardo Aguirre jumping. Well, I'm guessing that's gonna make it third and one. And they'll move the ball up to make it third and short. So not only is Aguilar a, oh, oh. They're going to say that it was the Generals that moved first. And that's what caused the Gary to jump over. So this crowd has turned quickly on the officiating crew. Third and 11 changes the complexion here. Triple out to the far side on the right. They throw it out there to the right side and it is not handled. I can tell you why, because Jackson Sanchez could hear about eight Thunderbird that flying over there. Number five, Marco so what looked like a promising drive, Rick Van Horn, turned into a stalled, penalty-laden, forced into a punnable area. 
Wow. Pushed them all the way back to the 30. And they thought it was going to be third and one from the 39. Block! Oh! The big fella's got it. He blocks it and picks it up. How's that for a play? How's that? Pedro Garcia takes it off the chest, picks it up. Look at this Thunderbirds crowd. Wow. They're back in it. He takes the snap so so close does, to the line yeah. of scrimmage. And that was Aguilar's ball. He's got to get that ball up. Since you're so close, you know, you kind of you give it and you take it away there. That was that was all on Aguilar there. So now it's first and 10 from the 12-yard line. Estrada takes the snap. Misdirection play, and it ends up in Walker's hands. He's hit hard. And they're going to say he never got to the line of scrimmage and lost a yard. He tried to use the misdirection there, but as you say, two very well-coached teams. And that defense of the Generals did not bite. They were waiting for it. Second and 11. Estrada keeps it himself. Cuts back up. Nice strong run right there at about the five-yard line. Number eight, David Estrada. They're going to say to the six. Down by, down by Jackson Sanchez, but he picked up about eight yards, it looks like. It's going to be third and three. You know, they, although Tyreek Walker's their leading ball carrier, their, their biggest offensive weapon, you're going to see him play receiver, tailback. He, they move him around. They, they like to create mismatches in there. We saw that early on when he caught that long 48-yard pass. Third and three, Rick. They bring it around the left side to Sandoval. He's going to come up short. It's going to be fourth. And a and long to two. 20 on Kenny Sondeville, brought down by Jackson Sanchez and Colby Miller. It's going to make it fourth and three. Fourth and three? That's weird. He gained two yards, but it's still fourth and three. Looks, they've got a chance to get a first down here. What do you do here, coach? Fourth and three. Well, Still can get it inside, as you say, and start a whole new set of downs at the one. They're going to go for it. Estrada behind center. Will he hard count? He does not. They give it to Walker. They figure Walker can do it, and he can. Touchdown, Thunderbirds. If you're a Thunderbird fan, that's what everybody up in the stands was saying. <laughs> give it to Tyreek, and that's exactly what they did. Give it to their main man. Boy, he looked good going in, didn't he? Here's the PAT. It's up and it's through. We got a nice football game right here in Shafter. We'll be back right after this. We're tied at seven of Kern High Network. Left in the first quarter, Shafter General. California's largest Buick GMC dealer, Motor City, has the best offer on your new professional grade GMC Sierra. Get up to $7,500 in total savings on the Sierra 2500 or 3500 HD Crew Cab Denali. Or drive away the Sierra Half Ton Crew Cab SLT with up to $11,000 in savings. Go online to MotorCityGMC.com for all the details. Welcome to the city, Motor City. California's largest Buick GMC dealer, Motor City, has the best offer on your new professional grade GMC Sierra. Get up to $7,500 in total savings on the Sierra 2500 or 3500 HD Crew Cab Denali. Or drive away the Sierra Half Ton Crew Cab S. Don't forget to stand up for the kickoff. Welcome back, everybody. Vance Palm alongside Rick Van Horn. We are at Shafter High School. We are tied at seven with 136 remaining in this first quarter. The Thunderbirds of Kennedy have just punched it in after a blocked punt that put him in scoring position. And this ball is going to be taken, oh, almost. 
almost, just a little too far. Avila just has to catch it in the end zone. It'll be first and 10 Shafter. Well, Rick, the Thunderbirds had two shots to get in the end zone that first in this first garbage, quarter. They did. American got that one. They're one of our they sponsors. did. And, and, you know, Shafter and, uh, hasn't really, really been playing it. clean. A lot of penalties, a lot of drop balls. So they need to get it going here if they want to stay in this game. When you're at home, an undefeated matchup, with all of this energy, boy, the expectation level is that you will be the aggressor. You will be on the attack. And it's a nice start to this drive. Avila got about five, but I'll tell you what, Christian Maldonado came in and was not afraid this time to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Avila. Did not let him shake and bake too much. Sanchez in motion, they give it to Sanchez. He looks to cut up field and gets the first down for 32 yard line. Picked up the first down before he goes down. That's gonna be General's first and 10 from the 30. So they move the chains quickly with two plays. Oh goodness. <laughs> it looked crowd, like <laughs> what the crowd the crowd below is giving the uh, line judge a big boo we I, saw about seven bodies fly past the 30 yard line i thought okay, so that's gonna be third and one that's big something were to happen here third and one maybe I'm, he was oh bad snap aguilar on the run can he get rid of it he does smartly and it's picked off he's gonna go all the way to the house are you kidding me anthony antiveros I think the interception is going to stand, but we've got a penalty. So the high snap, we thought it was the first down. They didn't get it. Third and one, the high snap. Aguilar wisely comes around and takes a look at the area. He had the ball. He had it under control. Delivered what he thought was going to be a nice pass. It was broken up, intended for Sanchez, but broken up by Onoveros and then hauled back in. But here's the white hat. After the interception, the, it's going to be a personal foul against the Thunderbirds, so the touchdown won't count. But the so Thunderbird the crowd obviously down, not happy with not that, but elated and thrilled that not only have they thwarted another general's drive, They're back in business with a first to 10 at the Shafter 34 yard line. First and 10 from the 34 Ooh, yard boy. line. Rick. You know, very unlike Alex Aguilar. Here comes Kennedy. Oh, oh, well, the big guy there moved. That's Ivan Garza. And I thought when Aguilar yeah, he composed himself, came around, took a good look yeah. at it. It oh, looked like Jackson might have had his, or excuse me, was that, uh, yeah, Jackson Sanchez. Looks like he had his hand on it. But we're talking, I was getting ready to say that very unusual for Alex Aguilar. He's thrown 29 touchdowns to only three interceptions this year. I mean, you don't get that. That's Baker Mayfield numbers. First and 15, Walker with the carry. Walker back past the original line of scrimmage. That's a big gain of seven yards, and that'll put it. down by number 32, senior Andrew Pompa. A second and eight. And that's going to do it for the first quarter. Seven to seven, the score. We've got a really nice football game up here in Shafter. We'll be back in the second quarter on Kern High Network. That'll bring us to the end of the one thing about Kern Schools is you get to do your banking your way. I still like writing checks and visiting my branch. For me, it's all about the mobile, and I still do everything online or through the ATM. So no matter how you do your banking, Kern Schools is always there. Kern Schools, together we have something special. 
One thing about Kern Schools is you get to do your banking your way. I still like writing checks and visiting my branch. For me, it's all about the mobile. And I still do everything online or through the ATM. So no matter how you do your banking, Kern Schools is always there. Kern Schools, together we have something special. There are over a hundred places to get pizza in Kern County, but only four are good enough to be called Tony's. So what's the Tony's pizza difference? We're not giving away our secrets, but the proof is in the pizza. Tony's Spicy Mexicana, the mouth-watering Hawaiian, the award-winning Chili Verde, and so many more. Trust us, you'll find your favorite. If you want great pizza, you can play the numbers game, or you can get it right the first time. Tony's Pizza, three locations in Bakersfield and one in Shafter. One thing about Kern Schools is you get to do your banking your way. I'm a traditional banker. I still like writing checks and visiting my branch. I'm a millennial, and for me, it's all about the mobile. And I'm somewhere in between. I still do my banking online and at the H. Welcome back. Second quarter is about to start here at Shafter. We're tied up at seven. The Generals welcoming in, or I should at least say they're hosting the Kennedy Thunderbirds from Delano and they hand the ball and, uh, off to four, Walker Jeremy again Walker on a second and eight, and that's going to bring up about a third and four. Looks like it's going to be. As third and four. Estrada, the quarterback, the senior at six foot, showing his moxie. He was stripped. A 98 yard fumble recovery touchdown. Wow. And that time Walker hammered at the line of scrimmage. This brings up an interesting call, fourth and six at the 30 yard line. So if they have a young man with a big boot and can get it there. But I don't see a kicking team, I don't see the field goal unit on. So fourth and six, we're in second quarter action now. Estrada, draw play to Walker, and Walker, wow, what a nice run, really I nice got play. It. I got to think. And I'll tell you what, David Estrada sure sold that. A little reverse draw there, nice play call by the Thunderbirds. The way Estrada took his steps as he's backing up to pass, he sold it so beautifully, you know. Yeah, he's got to drop, he's got to wrap that thing around. Really nice play, picks up the first down, first and 10. The ball's at the 23 yard line. Now they have Walker on that inside give, and Walker just plowing ahead to the 14 yard line. Tyreek Walker. Boy, not hard to see why they rack up so many yards. Offensive line gets off, does their job, stay where they're supposed to play on those specifically Difficult plays to defend. They don't give it away. And Walker finishes off with all the hard work. Estrada keeps up to this point down to the 10 yard line. And that'll be a first down at I believe the 11. Number so they can pick up another one. On the keeper. Exactly what Shafter didn't want Kennedy to do. First down. Take the ball and just drive it down their throats. <laughs> wears and tears on your lineman, eats up the clock. Takes the home crowd out of it. Takes the home first crowd first out of it. From the 12 or 13 down there. And now it's first and 10. And from this angle, I'm having a tough time. I think it's at the 11, but Estrada calls a timeout. Timeout, Kennedy. We'll stay here because we just came back from the quarter break. Again, if you're just getting with us, I'm Vance Palm with Rick Van Horn. Great to have you with us tonight. To We're at Shopper High School. We want to thank the United States Army. Thank you so much, U.S. Army, for the deep, ingrained relationship that you have with the current high school district, our student athletes, all of our students. Thank you so much to the United States Army for being such a special part of all of these broadcasts on Kern High Network. We also want to thank. Kern Schools Federal Credit Union, a name synonymous with all of our students. 
and and don't forget the supporting us in so many ways and jumping on board with the Kurnai Network. And, uh, they've got good food How about Motor City? Now. The Motor City Minute. Miguel, you and I and went out and shot that very first shot eye. in the summertime. Stockdale High School. The grass was like seven feet high, wet. Any of you out Miguel there, rolls no out looking like about. he's in a GQ magazine, ready to rock and roll. Motor City, thank you for all that you do for our community and for the Motor City Minute. Hot, love it. And Tony's Pizza. Tonight we will have a Tony's Pizza player of the game. Who will it be? Long ways away from that. We're like tied at seven. And after the, the timeout. With his cannon over there. Here come the Thunderbirds. Great play by the Generals getting back in there deeply. Rafael Zamudio. Big loss, about a three-yard loss. After the timeout, Rick, the Shafter Generals capitalize on the Thunderbirds after their timeout. Yeah, there's a big stand for Shafter right here. You're right. Anthony Onaveros. In the backfield, he opens up the freeway for Walker to go through, and they get him up to about the seven-yard line. So the young man with the interception, Anthony Ontiveros, was that lead back to go through and clear the way out. Kennedy's doing right what they want to do. They want to run the ball, take time off. Keep the ball out of the hands of who? Third and seven. Alex Aguilar. Another timeout, second timeout called timeout, by Kennedy. Kennedy. Rick, one thing I was going to bring up is that Coach Milan preaching the one side of the ball philosophy and if that's the case and it holds true like it is tonight in their successes you're going to have a team on defense with some very fresh legs because their offense has been on the field a long time already yeah. and their defense is going to be amped up and geared up you know they played a <laughs> they played a lot of guys on their schedule this year that they've just been better had better talent they've four of their teams that they've beaten this year didn't have 500 records so the that, uh, that allows them to go one way now, sorry buddy mixed in there some the, the ooze and the oz you were hearing shirts. is that the guy shooting the t-shirts out of the rocket was shooting them over the stands out into the parking lot <laughs> He's shooting it over the stands. Here we go. Back to football. Walker trying to get to the end zone for the oh. second time. Gets cut down at the four-yard line on a third and, and seven. Number four, it looks like he was brought down by number 15, Nathan yeah, Gonzalez. Yeah, nice tackle out there by Nathan, Nathan Gonzalez. Big hit by Jackson. Could be fourth and four. How about this? Jackson Sanchez. Rick, you got a fourth and four. They can still pick up a first down. This is where they were a few minutes ago when Tyreek Walker took it in from the left side. And they're taking their sweet time making their decision here. They're gonna have to call a timeout. I can't imagine that they're gonna get this playoff in time. They're already counting it. They will not. Timeout called by Mario Milan. We'll take a short break. We've had two in a row. We'll be right back on Kurnai Network. Every team trains hard. Every team prepares to win. But when U.S. Army soldiers take the field, it's best if the other guys don't bother showing up. See if you have what it takes at GoArmy.com slash team. One thing about Kern Schools is you get to do your banking your way. I still like writing checks and visiting my branch. For me, it's all about the mobile, and I still do everything online or through the ATM. So no matter how you do your banking, Kern Schools is always there. Kern Schools. Together, we have something special.
All that applause you're hearing is the crowd below us, the home chapter crowd. It's a fourth and four from the five yard line. Shafter on defense, Thunderbirds trying to pick up either a first down or more. Estrada has it, he's in trouble, he's running for it. Estrada's in trouble, ball fumbled! It's picked up in the 15 yard line. Oh boy. So the Thunderbirds who punched it in last time they were in that position, Rick, this time Estrada on a bootleg to the right ran into big trouble. Looked like some great scouting by that Shafter defensive coaching staff because he was in trouble instantly and didn't get rid of it. So even a bigger loss. Yeah, I didn't see a receiver out there who he's going to throw to. Will the general strike quickly on this momentum? They'll try. Aguilar floats it up, and it is going to be going to be a pass interference. And the Thunderbirds, had they turned around, could have had an interception. The ball was underthrown. The ball was underthrown. Receiver had the DB beat. Ball was underthrown, allowed him. Receiver had to come back for the ball. Kimberly for pass interference against Kennedy. That's going to be first down. Chapter. Already in a quarter and a half, we've had a lot of big plays. Fourth and two by Kennedy. We've had a block punt interception by Kennedy. 98 yard fumble return by Shafter. And a lot of penalties. Whistles blow. Did flags fly, or are they just trying to get everybody ready? No movement of the football, so they're just looking to get everybody set here. First and 10. Shafter has it at their own 35-yard line. Avila. Oh! Handoff to number 21, Pedro Avila. He's about a step away from breaking those. Christian Maldonado came sweeping in with his left wrist to catch Avila or Kevin would still be following him on camera. He was gone. Again, another first down. Aguilar looking straight into the eyes of about five Thunderbirds. Pouncing around the line of scrimmage as if they'll bring it. Avila again finds his way to midfield. Yeah, these big linemen are doing their work up front, and Avila's just getting behind them. He is, you know, that Shafter's got a good, what they call, box number, you know. Kennedy's got six in the box, so it's kind of a run, run count for that offense, the RPO you hear so much about. Again. Look at Pedro Avila work the legs for another first down. So after a couple of questionable passes and throws, I should say, by Aguilar, it looks as though Coach Perucci is saying, all right, until that gets honed in and dialed in a little tighter, <laughs> let's just pound it out here. Playing a little cover three, a little combo coverage here, trying to take away the pass, but they're giving up the run here. Aguilar, new running back, hands it to Hernandez. Hernandez chews up seven yards. Number 20, Nelson Hernandez. Looks like Nelson picked up about seven yards on that. Here come the generals, Rick. Aguilar on a second and four takes the snap. He rolls this way right below us, wants to throw, ultimately does. And a blown tackle at the 32-yard line. And it's a huge gain out there for Isaac Enriquez. And should have been wrapped up on the spot that he caught it at the ankles. But he breaks the tackle and off he goes. Aguilar, this time to his left, stops, comes back to his right. He could run it in if he wants, and he might. Aguilar, 
Touchdown. Shafter answers quickly. Aguilar's a playmaker. Take away one thing, he's gonna find something else. Low snap, oh. bobbled. What's gonna happen now? And that's a broken that's a play. Oh! 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 And the sequence really, and another flag, was really unfortunate because the second guy got caught. <laughs> some flags on the field. Here comes the white hat. There's two penalties. Unsportsmanlike conduct after the play, and that's going to be on the Thunderbirds. No after the play. We've got dueling personal fouls against Shafter and Kennedy. And you know what? Honestly, Rick, I, good to see quarter. the officials saw both of them because really it was a general that started it and a Thunderbird that came in to finish it. And then a few more cats rolled in there to say, hold on, hold on. So uh, excellent job by those officials. Not lost in any of this is a failed PAT. A failed PAT that could come back and bite him in the butt the way this game's going. On a game like this, 13-7, <laughs> wow. We have seen a lot of unique plays, as you say, Rick, in this yeah. first half. We've seen it all. Some big, long, exciting plays. Some good, rough, tough football right between the tackles. Some long plays from the line of scrimmage. Block punts. There's been a lot going on here. We still have a lot more football. Fans aren't used to this. You know, last, last game, last week, Kennedy put up 70 against McFarland. Shafter's averaging 48 points a game. So that's a lot of a lot of standing up all through the games for these fans. Yeah, you're right. For fans that are so used to just score, 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 all of a sudden the tension's starting to get a little bit more wound up here, a little tighter. Here we are under six to go in this first half and a total of 20 points only scored. And that's, that six-point score will loom for quite a while. Here come the Thunderbirds, ball taken at about the 15 yard line. He gets it up to the 42 yard line. So, boy, that's a nice job by Jonathan Carrillo. Yeah, nice return by Carrillo. Patient, didn't really try to force it. And he said, okay, want to give me 25 yards, I'll take it, first and 10. Walker tries to get to the right side on the start of this drive, gets four yards. Looks like he picked up about two yards on that. He's gonna make it second and eight. Five and a half to go here in this first half. Our director, producer tonight, East High Blade, Miguel Garcia. Our cameraman extraordinaire and all things audio, West High Viking, Kevin Willie. Strata on the keeper gets up to midfield. And up partner Rick eight, Van Horn nodding his Close head, likes what he sees. Further, but uh, no first down. It's going to be third and real close. Strata, Strata does a good job running this, managing this offense for Coach Milan. You know, he's a senior starter. Uh, I agree. At, well, so aptly put as we say that here he comes right behind center and snaps a third and one and picks up an easy first down i've never understood why any woman like think that there's a, the like a, a derogatory or negative 
me first and ten commentary when you were used the term game manager. I've always thought that's a compliment, actually. Yeah. I know what yeah. they say because he's not a maybe a superstar outstanding striker, but I'll take game manager with the offense that he has. That's with right. The tools that he has, the line yeah. that he has, the system that he has. He does a great job. Now it's first and ten inside general territory. He steps back up, looks like he was going to pass, tucks it in. Puts the ball in the outside hand. Oh, and a big block out there. Oh, and I think the Thunderbird crowd's going to not like this. That was a good, clean block. And that official is going to call it a clip. And the only reason I'm so adamant, because I was watching. Yeah. I was watching it before it happened. And they're going to make this call on Sandoval, the Thunderbird. And I'm assuming. I'm assuming it's going to be a clip or a block in the back or something, but... The Thunderbird crowd on the other side, yeah. not happy with this call. It's what you call power of persuasion. If you saw all the Shafter coaches, they were in the ear of that referee. Well, we talked about Estrada. Woo, what a big play that was. Estrada being the manager. You know, Coach Milan doesn't ask him to do a whole lot. Doesn't ask him to win the game. Give it to the guys that can win the game, and that's what he does. And it, well, that right there was a fantastic job by Estrada. Tucks it in, gets out of trouble, and just takes off running, and it would have been a huge first down, but call back on an arguable call. <laughs> Let's put it that way. On both sides of the football, but nevertheless, first and 12 now, midfield. Estrada rolls to his right, wants to throw, has to get back out of trouble, and it goes down. So, second and a bunch. Timeout Shafter, Time Shafter, 13 to 7. So already Coach Perucci thinking about the clock. Wants as much time as he can get with so much yardage ahead of these Thunderbirds. Rick, let's take a look at some of the other games taking place tonight in Kern County. Interesting matchups this evening around town. Garces at Liberty. I had a night off the other night visiting with some friends and scooted up the hill to catch a little of the Garces Centennial game. My first view of Joe Daddy Campbell. Looked strong, looked good, nice defense there. They're at Liberty tonight, Liberty's homecoming, and Liberty trying to stay focused for tonight, but also know that the drillers are around the corner. Yeah, next week is the big one, and uh, if they can both stay focused, not overlook Centennial or Garces this week. I know uh, the drillers were up 7-3 in the first quarter. So those are a couple of interesting games tonight. Tonight was one of those nights, My this week was one of the weeks my phone was kind of getting lit up a little bit on which game we were going to do. And BP, where are you guys at? Where are you guys at? And when I tell them this game, they unanimous yeah yeah unanimous oh man. Uh, yeah that's gonna be a great one second and long 24 they get it out to walker oh we got a flag flag on the play and looked like a clean hit don't know if it was the hit or if it was before the hit oh illegal man downfield okay and lineman downfield yeah yeah Walker's route kind of flared out a little bit. So they're going to decline that because it'll make it third and 24. Yeah. Well, Kennedy going the wrong way. It's the third play in a row. And what they thought was going to be a huge first down from Estrada's carry. But they called the clip. And now a stoppage of play here. And it's going to be a timeout taken by the Shafter Generals. We'll take timeout one as Shafter. well. 345 left in the half. 13-7 Shafter. What a football game on Kern High Network. One thing about Kern Schools is you get to do your banking your way. I still like writing checks and visiting my branch. For me, it's all about the mobile. And I still do everything online or through the ATM. So no matter how you do your banking, Kern Schools is always there. Kern Schools. Together, we have something special. 
One thing about Kern Schools is you get to do your banking your way. I still like writing checks and visiting my branch. For me, it's all about the mobile. And I still do everything online or through the ATM. So no matter how you do your banking, Kern Schools is always there. Kern Schools, together we have something special. There are over a hundred places to get pizza in Kern County, but only four are good enough to be called Tony's. So what's the Tony's pizza difference? We're not giving away our secrets, but the proof is in the pizza. Tony's Spicy Mexicana, the mouth-watering Hawaiian, the award-winning Chili Verde, and so many more. Trust us, you'll find your favorite. If you want great pizza, you can play the numbers game, or you can get it right the first time. Tony's Pizza, three locations in Bakersfield and one in Shep. Benno, find Waldo, find number four, Tariq Walker. You're not going to be far from the ball. Oh, look here. Oh. Batted up, batted away. Incomplete. That ball was up in the air for a second. And dangerous play. Incomplete pass, and that brings up fourth and about 40. From the punt standpoint, it's a long, long ways. 23 to go to get a first down. Not going to happen. And the punt team is on. They get it up, and it will be fair caught at the 27-yard line. So the Generals get the ball back with some good clock management, some timeouts called. So now they have 3.34 to go, and they lead by 6, 13-7 here on Kern High Network. Again, thank you to the U.S. Army. Thank you to Kern Schools Federal Credit Union. Thank you to Motor City. And thank you to Tony's Pizza. Coach Perucci and his staff up by a touchdown. Well, up by six, yeah. With that missed PAT opportunity. And keep it interesting for a while. This big game has brought out, I'd say, 100 cheerleaders. Aguilar connects. No, he doesn't. Dropped out there by Sanchez, and that ball was up in the air. We've seen a oh, flag on the play. Number six, Jackson Sanchez, incomplete. There's Boy. a flag on the play. A lot of flags. And they have an illegal man downfield, so got their eye on that. Illegal man downfield. Well, we talked about it earlier. A lot of penalties, a lot of drop balls for Shafter. That'll move it back to first and 15. Five yard penalty, it's gonna be first and 15. Aguilar dropped again out there, this time by Enriquez. Passing so the crowd below me 19, starting Isaac to Enrique grumble and mumble just a little bit. They're not thrilled with these drop passes, neither is their Second quarterback, 15. Alex Aguilar. 3.29 to go in the half, 13 to seven. Aguilar, they stay on the ground with this time to Avila. And he goes up to about the 27 yard Pedro line. Pedro Avila on the carry. Avila. Looks like he picked up about seven. My apologies to the Avila family. I, I have some good friends that are Avilas. So it comes out naturally. Pedro Avila. Three receivers down the right side of the line of scrimmage. And look at this. A hard count again by Aguilar. Great job by Aguilar there. It makes his third down a little bit more manageable. Coach Perucci didn't want to use up all his timeouts and get the ball back and then have to turn around and give it back to Kennedy. Avila, I don't think, think he got it. Close. Oh, well, the line judge down there well, says he did. He did. Big hit, so big Pedro contact. Avila on the carry for a first down chapter. The chapter's first and 10 on the 30. Man, big strong hit in there by Pedro so. Garcia for the Thunderbirds. First and 10, 2.49 to go. Aguilar. Connects to Jackson Sanchez, but nowhere to go, and he caught it awfully low. Yeah, nice catch by Jackson. Pass complete for a tiny little loss. That's going to be second and 12. Well, actually, Not a good throw by Aguilar. No, went back a couple yards.
Second and 12, they say. 2.22 to go here in the half. Aguilar takes the snap, hands the ball off. This time, it's the sure-footed Nelson Hernandez. Nelson Hernandez but picks up a handful there. It's going to make it third and wow, really, seven. Really nice playing out there. He's brought down by Kennedy's number 34, Anthony Ontiveros. Ontiveros and Ricardo Aguirre on that tackle. So third and seven, two minutes to go here. Could the Thunderbirds get the ball back? Aguilar hands the ball off to Avila. Oh, and he's hit hard, still on his feet. Gets to about the 44-yard line, but Pedro well short four more. of a first down. Could be fourth and three. They're at the 44-yard line. We know that Aguilar is already their punter. Coach Perucci wants to give them as little time as possible. Will he just take the penalty and move it back, or are they just going to go for the first down? Watch the long count here. He may try to hard count him. No. Aguilar tosses. And it is the first down. They get it. Rodriguez comes down with the catch. Wow, what a great call. Always great when you have a senior leader like Aguilar with, with confidence. Whistles blow. And that's the official's timeout. I don't think they have the chain set the up yet. Official's timeout. Okay, there we go. So it's first and 10 from the 50. Maybe just a half a yard inside Thunderbirds territory. Aguilar drops back, flushed out of the pocket, throws over here to the near side, and it is, is it picked off? Ooh, man, what a nice play on the ball. And that was almost intended for number 34, Felix Chacon. Intercepted out he there by lead. Carrillo. Jonathan Carrillo's had a nice football game so far. Woo, boy. Nice kickoff return. Nice, nice play right there on the pass. We put a beat on that ball. Second and 10. 106 remaining in this first half. In motion, Rodriguez. Aguilar takes the snap. Looks over to the left side, tosses it to the left side to Avila. Avila makes a great move. Avila still on his feet. Avila cuts back up. Can Avila get to the end zone? Avila to the five. He's in. What a run by Avila. That was that was all Pedro Avila there. Tossed it out to the left side, up against the Thunderbird sideline. He hurdled one defender, and then he was off. With less than a minute to go in the half, the Shafter Generals throw a huge body blow. And here's the PAT. And that, my friends... is what you call taking the wind out of the sails of a Thunderbird team that had really worked hard to keep this thing close. Keep it close, and the worst thing could happen is when, if Shafter goes up by two touchdowns, in the style offense Kennedy runs, it's not a come from behind offense. Rick, they make this stop right there, and you know, it stays a six point ball game. You know, this all goes back to that holding call. You know, when Estrada ran the option there, had the first down, and they brought it back with a holding, and that was a, the first of a succession of four plays that went backwards for Kennedy. 55 seconds remains in this first half. It's not over. Almost a minute, time to work with. If you're the Thunderbirds, they do have Jonathan Carrillo, who's already shown us his speed and toughness. Don't forget to stand up for the kickoff. Marco Rodriguez will do the honors. It's a low one, right in, oh no, in and out of the hands of Carrillo. Carrillo. Looking to get to the outside. Brought down at about the 30-yard line. Carrillo on the return. 
So 70 yards to go to the goal line, but they could also get it within field goal range. Kennedy's first and 10 on the 30 yard line with just about 46 seconds left in the half. 20 to seven, Shafter. And Kennedy doesn't have any timeouts left in this half. So they may just decide to run this clock out and go into lick their wounds and go into halftime. Coach Perucci really giving it to Isaac Enriquez, one of his receivers. Sweep it out here to the near side and Alex Aguilar makes a nice play. Nothing doing there on Sandoval's run. Nothing doing there. Loss of four. 19 seconds remains here in this first half. They're just going to keep it on the ground, I think. Shuttle pass out to Walker. Takes a big hit. And that's going to do it for the first half. A 20 to 7 lead for Shafter. We will step away for halftime, and you can enjoy all the sights and sounds of Shafter High School here. What a nice start to a great football game here on Turn 9 Network. We'll be back in a few. about Kern Schools is you get to do your banking your way. I still like writing checks and visiting my branch. For me, it's all about the mobile, and I still do everything online or through the ATM. So no matter how you do your banking, Kern Schools is always there. Kern Schools, together we have something special. One thing about Kern Schools is you get to do your banking your way. I still like writing checks and visiting my branch. For me, it's all about the mobile, and I still do everything online or through the ATM. So no matter how you do your banking, Kern Schools is always there. Kern Schools, together we have something special. There are over a hundred places to get pizza in Kern County, but only four are good enough to be called Tony's. So what's the Tony's pizza difference? We're not giving away our secrets, but the proof is in the pizza. Tony's Spicy Mexicana, the mouth-watering Hawaiian, the award-winning Chili Verde, and so many more. Trust us, you'll find your favorite. If you want great pizza, you can play the numbers game, or you can get it right the first time. Tony's Pizza, three locations in Bakersfield and one in Shafter. One thing about Kern Schools is you get to do your banking your way. I'm a traditional banker. I still like writing checks and visiting my branch. I'm a millennial, and for me, it's all about the mobile. And I'm somewhere in between. I still do my banking online and at the ATM. And with access to over 30,000 surcharge-free ATMs nationwide, Kern Schools is always close by. So no matter how you do your banking, Kern Schools is always there. That's why we're the number one financial institution in all of Kern County. Kern Schools, together we have something special. One thing about Kern Schools is you get to do your banking your way. I'm a traditional banker. I still like writing checks and visiting my branch. As a millennial, for me it's all about the mobile. And I'm somewhere in between. I still do everything online or through an ATM. So no matter how you do your banking, Kern Schools is always there. That's why we're the number one financial institution in all of Kern County. Take advantage of our low mortgage rates, including 60-day rate lock and no cost to you. Purchase or refinance your home today. Kern Schools, together we have something special. It's wicked cool. It's, it's our new aviation class. It gives kids a chance to break into the industry. There's a lot of careers in aviation. This class is a lot more than just flying planes. We've learned so much already. We've learned how to take off. We've learned instrument flight rules. It's something everyone can do, I think. And you see, remember that horizon? Try to keep it parallel to your cockpit. After the two-year program, they're going to be able to take the knowledge test for their private pilot exam. I am a pilot. I've been uh, in Bakersfield for 10 years. I worked as an instructor for six years and then became a corporate pilot. And I'm a teacher here. <laughs> we have amazing equipment. Even flight schools don't have that much equipment. You put a class like this somewhere at North High and it, it's really preparing kids to succeed because it gives them a whole new set of opportunities they never knew that they had the chance to pursue. 
I'm proud to say that I'm from North High School and that we have administration that's willing to put the money into offering really, really neat programs like this and preparing kids to succeed. A lot of more uh, hands-on activity, a lot of more about woodworking and, and what to do, how to make a career for myself. It's not only for guys. I am actually learning how to make cupboards and put it together, like doors, cabinets. It's really fun, actually. It's really amazing to see their growth over the course of a year and how they can come in with no real skill at all and leave being able to actually produce furniture and cabinetry. Houses need cabinets, businesses, having a pool of resources or kids that have some knowledge in the industry would be real good. Pull down on that. Let's slide these up. Watch fingers. It's changed a lot. What I'm seeing here is what it's going towards. The CNC equipment, computers. I could actually build cabinets out of this shop. It's, it's state of the art. It really is. I am constantly looking for students that have been through these programs. It's always nice to have a person that has some experience. It's a lot easier to train. I think we're fortunate in Bakersfield that the current high school district has invested in a program like this. I would encourage other businesses to partner up with the Kern High School District like I've done here because this really shows you what can be done if business comes together with the Kern High School District. This is where we're going to train the kids to actually get jobs in the industry. We're going to give them the basic tools that they need, also the skills that they need to understand where they fit into the industry. All the animated things, because we have everything that we need in the scenes. They are learning the principles of animation, Photoshop, they're learning how to animate in 2D and 3D. And when you swap to that shape, then you're just going to drag these over here. The storyboard aspect of creating basically the skeleton of the story and then just sort of directing people on my vision of what I want in the story. And it's also giving me the advantage of Mr. Plourd since he's worked at so many companies, being able to put it in my resume and be like, this is the art direction I've received. The movements of our show tonight are entitled Storm, Flight, and Pursuit. Now under the direction of Drum Major Travis Poston and Assistant Drum Major Daniel Escalon, we present to you Ka, a Cirque du Soleil experience. Drum Major, is your band ready? You may lead your band into competition.
Ladies and gentlemen, your chapter high school marching band. The band travels to Visalia tomorrow to compete with the likes of Fireball. The band is currently raising money to purchase new uniforms. We are $6,000 away from our goal. Please consider supporting the band in our future fundraisers, including a tamale sale happening very soon. Please. One thing about Kern Schools is you get to do your banking your way. I still like writing checks and visiting my branch. For me, it's all about the mobile, and I still do everything online or through the ATM. So no matter how you do your banking, Kern Schools is always there. Kern Schools. Together, we have something special. One thing about Kern Schools is you get to do your banking your way. I still like writing checks and visiting my branch. For me, it's all about the mobile, and I still do everything online or through the ATM. So no matter how you do your banking, Kern Schools is always there. Kern Schools. Together, we have something special. There are over a hundred places to get pizza in Kern County, but only four are good enough to be called Tony's. So what's the Tony's pizza difference? We're not giving away our secrets, but the proof is in the pizza. Tony's Spicy Mexicana, the mouth-watering Hawaiian, the award-winning Chili Verde, and so many more. Trust us, you'll find your favorite. If you want great pizza, you can play the numbers game, or you can get it right the first time. Tony's Pizza, three locations in Bakersfield and one in Shafter. One thing about Kern Schools is you get to do your banking your way. I'm a traditional banker. I still like writing checks and visiting my branch. I'm a millennial, and for me, it's all about the mobile. And I'm somewhere in between. I still do my banking online and at the ATM. And with access to over 30,000 surcharge-free ATMs nationwide, Kern Schools is always close by. So no matter how you do your banking, Kern Schools is always there. That's why we're the number one financial institution in all of Kern County. Kern Schools, together we have something special. One thing about Kern Schools is you get to do your banking your way. I'm a traditional banker. I still like writing checks and visiting my branch. As a millennial, for me it's all about the mobile. And I'm somewhere in between. I still do everything online or through an ATM. So no matter how you do your banking, Kern Schools is always there. That's why we're the number one financial institution in all of Kern County. Take advantage of our low mortgage rates, including 60-day rate lock and no cost to you. Purchase or refinance your home today. Kern Schools, together we have something special. It's wicked cool. It's, it's our new aviation class. It gives kids a chance to break into the industry. There's a lot of careers in aviation. This class is a lot more than just flying planes. Welcome back from halftime. Thank you to Kevin Willie for having all of that available for you to watch the marching Shafter General Band, thank you, Kevin. Appreciate that. Our director, producer, Miguel Garcia, superstar Uber track man from East High School, bouncing around up here as if he's ready to run. He wants to run. But he's also trying to stay warm because we have a nice cool breeze starting to blow in from the due north direction. 20 to 7 is the score. I almost said 13-7. It almost came out because that last score was at the very end of the second quarter. Shafter facing a third down, threw it out to Avila. He leaped over one Thunderbird and then he was gone. He was off and it makes it a 13 point deficit now. 20 to seven is the score. We're out at Shafter. Both teams four and zero in league, eight and zero overall. So the obvious being that one of these teams will have their first loss this evening. But as Rick mentioned in the pregame, sets up another big weekend of football next week. Most notably, the Shafter Wasco rivalry, which is amongst the longest and most fierce rivalries in all of Kern County sports. And also, as Rick mentioned, if a playoff game is played here, meaning the Valley Championship game will be the last game played here for a long, long, long time. This field, which has had so many historic moments, is going to go through a major facelift, and it's going to be a year of away football games for the Shafter General. So they're making the most out of these last few home games on this 
midfield here. 20 to 7 is the lead. Rick, your thoughts on the first half? Well, I'll tell you what, we had about a handful of big plays. If you look at it, you know, you had a Kennedy going for a fourth and two on the inside the five yard line, scoring a touchdown. Kennedy blocking a punt, intercepting Aguilar early on. So, you know, it looked like Kennedy had the momentum there for a while. But then, number one picks up a fumble, rumbles 98 yards to keep it in. And then Shafter defense comes in with a fourth and four stop on the goal line. And I tell you what, then they got the big stop there and the succession of negative plays for Kennedy that really turned this game around. Kevin, just this ambient uh, mic down just a hair. Just the ambient mic down just a hair. Thanks, buddy. Um, Rick Van Horn, BHS Driller, BC Renegade, UNLV Running Rebel, head coach at every level in the city. And his name is imprinted on, legally imprinted on <laughs> two great books, one on Bakersfield High School football, one on Bakersfield College football. Great author, great historian, and a great asset to our sports community here um, and the educational world as well. Rick, always a pleasure to call games with you. Here we go, second half, 20 to seven, Thunderbirds trail, but they're gonna take the, they get to uh, get the football here. Start off the second half. Well, here's a pitching wedge, gonna be fair caught at the 27 yard line. Smart decision by the Thunderbirds. Aaron Rio Number says, seven, hey, I'll Aaron take it, Rio stop it, and we'll start from right here. So first and 10, Thunderbirds trail by 13, but not an insurmountable task, but they've really got to make sure there's no mistakes. No mistakes. They've got plenty of time. They've got to put some nice drives together, and this, this is going to be a key drive coming out halftime. All right, Estrada hands the ball off. They stay on the ground. Walker, as Rick talked about him, has amassed a ton of yards this year. 1,200 rushing yards already in eight games. No gain, they say. Estrada Walker in motion, double handoff. Estrada's going to have to block, but no, the cut is back upfield, and he gets to about the 38-yard line, so the whistles finally blow, but forward progress will be in the 38. And that fake was to Walker, and it was actually Sandoval with the carry. I didn't hear any whistles, did you? Well, finally, but forward progress brought him up to the... 39 yard line so it'll get him a third and one really strong tough run out there third and one big play here to start this third quarter and the oh, handoff that's is right in the middle but what a great play by Joey Sanchez I don't think he got and it and Jose Ortiz oh goodness So they tried to muscle it right up the middle, and man, after a big, strong second down play, they could not make it happen on third down, and just like that, they're gonna have to punt the football away back into the hands of the Generals. A yard and a half shy of a first down. Here comes the punt. It's a wobbler, see what happens. And it takes a decent bounce to about the 35 yard line, but Man, if you're a Thunderbird fan, I think you thought for sure that you had that first down coming. Yeah. Big stop for Shafter coming out of halftime right there. You know, they had the momentum going into halftime, make a nice stop here, so. Spoke with some football royalty before the game. Won't give this person's name. But he has a vested interest in Shafter, but he's not coaching here, has never coached here, but well-known coach in the community. And he said, Vance, it's going to be a great football game tonight. Two real, really well-coached teams, evenly matched coach teams, as the Generals start off on their first play and they give it to who else? Avila, why not? 
And maybe a gain of a yard, maybe, on that first and 10 carry. And he said the strength of one team, the quickness of the other. Handoff to number 21, Pedro Avalos. The star power of one team, of one the That's gonna make it second nine. collective 11-man effort of the other. The two-way athletes on one team, the one-way athletes on the other. Aguilar throws. It's connected. It's caught out there. Big tackle at the 45-yard line. But Jackson Sanchez makes the catch. <laughs> this announcer's great. <laughs> Third and one, hard count by Aguilar. Nobody jumped this time for the Thunderbirds. That changes the complexion of this call anyway. Aguilar takes the snap, keeps it himself. He'll pick up the first down at least. A big stiff arm, gets him to the 40. Now he's at the 30, and he's tackled. A great play by Aguilar. He gives it the stiff arm, and off he goes. Excellent read by Aguilar. Could this eat. is this is the kind of drive Shafter is used to this year. Short passes, catching the ball, of course Aguilar making some runs. Rodriguez in motion. Now they load up the left side of the line of scrimmage. This is Avila again, gets it to about the 27 yard line and this deliberate. Let's go Pedro. Strong, hard punch after punch is what this offense looks like now. One in the gut, one in the jaw. One in the jaw, one in the gut. And here they come on what looks like a second and six. Ball at the 27-yard line. There's the handoff. Faked by Aguilar. And he gets up to the 22-yard line. Gain of about seven. Should bring up third and short. I think somebody's down for the generals, it might be Aguilar. Oh boy, our director producer, Miguel Garcia, believes that it may be Alex Aguilar, and I believe that it is. And the training staff around him, we'll take a short break here with 8.17 in the third quarter. Generals on the move, but their star quarterback down for the Every team trains hard. Every team prepares to win. But when U.S. Army soldiers take the field, it's best if the other guys don't bother showing up. See if you have what it takes at GoArmy.com slash team. One thing about Kern Schools is you get to do your banking your way. I still like writing checks and visiting my branch. For me, it's all about the mobile, and I still do everything online or through the ATM. So no matter how you do your banking, Kern Welcome back, everybody. A big thunderous round of applause was let out while we were away for break because Alex Aguilar was up and off on his own. Jackson Sanchez will come in for how many plays? We don't know yet. Third and three, big play to come in on. Hands the ball off, and it's to Avila. Can he get outside? Avila does get outside. The sheer speed of it all brings him down to the five-yard line. Just, I'm faster than you, man. That's right. Give him a couple blocks. Wow. Nice relief pitching there by Jackson. Jackson Sanchez, what a great play. <laughs> he comes in, hands it off to Avila, and says, go, 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 go. And now it's first and goal from the five-yard line for the Generals, and they could really take the lead here in a commanding way, and they do. And they Avila just plows in, and it's as if the Thunderbirds just weren't even ready for the play. Shafter's going to chase that missed extra point that they had in the first. It's 26 to half. seven now, right? They want to get it up to 28, make it a three touchdown game. They've got Avila on the right hip of Aguilar for this two point conversion. Everybody's tucked in tight for a second. A little misdirection, maybe. Aguilar fires it out and Ooh. it's broken up. It's broken up. He was intended out there for Marco Rodriguez. So, yeah. 19 point ball game now. So they couldn't get the two back. 
And with 7.59 to go in the third, the Thunderbirds now are up against it. A lot of football left, yes, but against this Shafter team now that's starting to get its mojo together, that's going to be a tall order. It is, especially for Kennedy. It's going to get Kennedy out of their, their comfort zone. Once again, everybody, pleasure to have you all with us tonight. There's a lot going on in the sports world, so if you're able to have us in your ear, we appreciate it. If you're watching us, thank you. This is the Kern High Network you're experiencing so on behalf of the, the Kern High School District. Live sports all year long. We've had some little great little football little games little this year, some great volleyball little games little this year. We've got some basketball coming up, some wrestling coming up. Our next one is Kakoa Witcher. She's out there. She's a senior. Hey, Kakoa. Senior night out here, as you can hear the public address announcer. And it's been a big senior night. We're talking a lot of seniors on this football team. Of course, they do the marching band and color guard, now the cheerleaders. So. And these are all seniors. Goodness. 26 sevens a score. And the Kennedy Thunderbirds have not been down like this yet this year. Here's a nine iron, could be taken at a nice spot. Oh, and it backs up, what's gonna happen? And it's taken by Christian Maldonado, 33 yard line. Rick the grass. Out there seems comfy and cozy and cushy, not too hard. That ball, that ball backed up a little bit. Kind of seen that a couple times in a couple punts, kind of just dying right there. A couple nine hours on the kickoff team or the kickoffs have died. Oh boy, a personal foul! I did not see. So that's going to come back. Didn't see it or know what it was. Oh boy. And as we mentioned, Thunderbird crowd is here. They have traveled well down I-99 or whatever road they take. There's a lot of options to get here from There's some back roads they can Delano. take. Sure, <laughs> I take them all the time. <laughs> Ooh, talk about going down the back road here. Now it's gonna be first and 10 from their own 17. So 15 yard penalty at the end of the kickoff and uh, that's some salt on the wound there for the Thunderbirds. They're trying to make something special happen here, and they're going to start deep in their own territory. Again, the quarterback is senior David Estrada. They give the ball to Walker. Walker to the outside. Met at the line of scrimmage. They gets about three after the initial contact. The second and seven. Tackle out there by Sanchez, a sophomore. Pedro Avila, let's go Pedro. Second and six, they say. So, wow, four long yards out of that. Didn't see that he got it, but he did. Looking down below us at their quarterback, Alex Ooh. Aguilar. Offside on Shafter, big 54. Who is that for Shafter? Jose Ortiz. It is. Let's make that second and six one. three one ninety five senior. So Thunderbirds are going to they'll take all they can get right now. Whatever it is that'll move them forward, they're going to need it. They've got a nineteen point deficit looking at them here. And this is the team that's eight and zero. Oh. Kennedy stays on the ground, and his whistles. Take a long time for this crew, huh? <laughs> I mean, they, they are getting the forward progress, and they pick up the first down, which is good. Uh, but a, they let a little, they yeah. let some contact happen before those whistles blow. So Whistle deficient. There's some Shafter fans below us that are not agreeing with the ball placement, and they are letting everybody know. First and 10. 
Look at this. What a play by Jackson Sanchez. David Estrada had nowhere to go. He had to duck, run for cover, and too late. Sanchez wrapped him up and threw him down. Boy, what a special young man this guy is. 5'10", 155-pound junior. A budding star for these generals. Well, he's made a couple plays tonight. He's, of course, he's got to be in the running for Tony's pizza of the game or pizza player of the game. Second and 17. Estrada rolls to his right, then stops, drops back, lets it fly, and incomplete. And I look to the far side to see if there's a flag. There is not. There was contact when the ball was in the air over there, but no flags. I think if Tariq doesn't get a hand up, knock that ball down. Number five, who's going to pick that? Third and 17. Five forty-six remains in the third quarter. Estrada, find find number four, and flag before the whistle blows, and it looks like it will be encroachment on Shafter, Coach Perucci. Livid. To him, it's an inconceivable that one of his guys are going to jump over the line on such a crucial play. Third and 11. Now it's third and 11. Was third and 16. A timeout taken. 546 remains here in the third quarter. Pleasure to have everybody with us tonight. Next week, the finale of league play for football. Playoffs start next week in volleyball. Other fall sports are in the playoffs. Tennis, a lot of things going on. But next week, Rick, if if the scores hold tonight and Liberty and BHS both get wins, it'll bring up two 4-0 teams, arguably considered the two heavyweights in the city area. Liberty at your Griffith Field, your thoughts? No doubt about it, two heavyweights. You know, uh, it kind of depends. If, if Liberty can run the ball with Sammy Stewart, they're gonna do well. If BHS can hold on to the ball, not turn it over, they got a chance. Saw their quarterback, Cameron Williams, for the Drillers last night, volleyball game. Said, hey, you playing? I said, yep. Yeah, you know it. You know their Achilles heel this year has been turnovers on offense. They just can't can't seem to hold on to it. Chapter's got to find. We look for Tariq Walker. What do they got planned for him here? I think they're going to send him right down the post. They throw down the middle and incomplete. No connection there. And Walker, I don't know if he even saw it coming. So fourth and long, they're going to punt. I've just heard a score. I believe they said it was God's team, 19. McFarland, 14. Is that what I heard? Arvin up by five or something like that? Wow. The Garden and the Sun doing well tonight. Come on, Bears. Oh, there's a nice punt. But it goes right into the hands of a dangerous Jackson Sanchez, quickly into his hands. Sanchez looking for some yardage, cuts, oh, stops, goes out of bounds at the 50. So it'll be first and 10 midfield, and I do see Alex Aguilar coming out onto the field. Good sign for the Generals. Five and a half left here in the third. A lot of football left, but the Generals could really make this a difficult, difficult task for Kennedy if they can chew up most of this five minutes and punch something in. We talked about it, you know, Shafter defense getting overlooked and all the, you know, the hype and and uh, the news reels and it's that Shafter defense that been keeping them in ball games and too serious so far for Kennedy. They haven't crossed the 50 yard line. First and 10. They stay on the ground, and they don't 
go anywhere. Hand Hernandez doesn't do much. Lost three yards on that, second and 13. Doubles on both sides. Fake handoff, nice pass, but a better hit. Jackson Sanchez makes the catch, but. Ooh, quick hit out there by Juvi Now Herrera Jr. Juvi Jr. Third and seven. Rick, dare I say this is. A big third down for Kennedy? It definitely is. Definitely is. Thank you, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of affirmation I'm looking for. But they go to Avila. Avila takes a look and says, nope. To the 20, stops, cuts back up. Oh, a couple of nice moves down to the 14-yard line. As he took off, our director, producer, Miguel Garcia, a sprinter himself, said, oh, my yeah, goodness. That, so that could be the play of the game right he, there. There's a, few, there's a lot of football left, though, fellas. I mean, that was going from third gear, and while he shifted to go to fourth, well, took a you, look at it, and then the whoop. Shaft or cut. Kennedy in kind of a blitz. They're starting to load the box there in that last series. Nice handoff over there to Hernandez to switch up the pace. Avila comes over to the side very quickly. Training staff just having a quick word with him, but he looks fine to me. Three forty remains in the third quarter, and anybody's looking for some entertainment, you can come listen to me and Ed argue about whether that's one yard or two yards. Hernandez, the lone back with Aguilar, he's on his left hip. They give it to him. Oh, what a nice looking wow. play this is, gone. Nelson Hernandez, three steps and he's out of here. And this game's gonna start to get out of hand. Shafter comes out running the ball tonight done most of their damage running the ball. We thought we might see an air an air circus with Aguilar, but we've seen we've seen ground and pound Perucci here. 322 remains here in this third quarter, 33 to 7. The Kennedy Thunderbirds now Having to regroup over there under first here head coach Mario Milan and realize, okay, all right, yeah. we're, we're in this thing pretty deep now. And, and so, with another league game ahead of him next week and certainly the playoffs, you know, I think it's time, yeah. maybe time that we say, hey, look, let's just get back to work on what we can do yeah. and do what we do well. Big ramifications of this game is probably the winner of this might be the number one seed in that Division Five playoff picture. Probably giving them a couple buys early on, so and home field advantage. A couple, depending wow. on how how many teams are in that bracket. I know we've got the uh, the coastal schools coming over to help fill that, but I don't know how many D five schools are over there. Rick brought a special guest with him tonight. Made a little road trip down here, enjoying himself and this vintage county football game. Shafter, an elite community in Kern County. The world passes by its fingertips and the railways just to the west of us. Here's a nine iron, again, not very far, taken this time at the 29 yard line. And decent field position up to about the 37. Number two, Edward Molina on the kickoff return. Delano. A powerhouse. Farming heart, farming community. Flags come out late on this. Whoa. Late, late flags. The white hat. It's going to be Kennedy 
the first and down, first and ten from the 37-yard line. But the referee's going to come out and make a phone call. I'm not even sure the oh, public address flag announcer flag knows a flag. Unsportsmanlike conduct against, conduct against Shafter. the Shafter Generals. It's going to be a first down, Kennedy. Huh. You know, one of our... One of our wow. sponsors is Richland Chevrolet. How about right this? The, the ball comes all the way up to the 48-yard line inside general territory. Boy, if there's anything that RFK could have used, it was that right there. Before the flag came out, I was talking about Delano, grape, grape harvesting capital of North America, the entire continent. Um, fantastic community. Just had their big... Parade last week. I mentioned earlier, spent most of my life up there in Delano. What a city. What a community. Just a phenomenal place to, to be from. As an Arvin guy, grew up in one of those rural communities. You were a big timer in the city. Hey, look at this. Get over here. Get over here. Oh, that t shirt that t shirt needs to come this way. First and ten. Quick pass out here. Oh, man, almost caught, almost intercepted. Well, I was just going to say, at, at what point does Kennedy come out of the comfort zone and start let, airing it out and letting it go a little bit? Like, it looks like now's the time. It was intended for Tyreek Walker. He almost made a great catch, but then right after that, it was just almost picked off. Intercepted, no. Second down, yes. Estrada rolls to his left, has some options. Oh, has a man open. Will he get it there? He does. What a pass. What a catch. That was a superb pass. That was a pretty nice catch by number four, Tyreek Walker. That's a big first down for Kennedy. Wow. And, and I agree with the announcer. It was a great catch. But what a pass on the road across, on the, yeah. on the run across his body, Rick. Shafter electing to put some heat they have on to. Estrada. Well, Shafter, and then go man coverage. And Tyreek's already shown that I don't know if there's a DB in Shafter on the Shafter team that can hold him. Two catches for 90 yards already tonight. Medina, the one back back there with Estrada. They, oh, and miscommunication. They were throwing to Louis Perez. and Look out. <laughs> ah, they're shooting the t-shirts they're shooting the t-shirts up to the coaching staff and it went up and the coach had it right there in his hands and he dropped it out and that the fans was, are booing the coaching staff that was, now <laughs> that was roger patterson <laughs> so patterson coach, after coach and teacher that dropped that coach patterson didn't make the catch on the t-shirts he's like hey i'm trying to call a football game and i'm getting <laughs> booed by the home fans <laughs> Man, that's a fun t-shirt shooting guy. Second and 10. Look at these three receivers way out to the top of your screen on the right side. Estrada rolls, steps up in the pocket, knows what he can do if he does, and goes to the 17-yard line, slides, picks up about three yards. Number eight, David on the keeper. Not a bad play. That offensive line for Kennedy does a good job. Does, can't do it for long, but they give him an initial pocket always. But, yeah. He's been, it, it doesn't, that pocket doesn't hold long. Does have a big fella in there. Yvonne Garza, 6'5", 280, number 52. Third and eight, two minutes to go here in the third quarter. Kennedy trying to make something happen to battle back in this thing. Their band playing the dramatic music. Estrada takes his snap, rolls to his right. Fires, throws, and it's caught out there for a big first down. Oh, look at this, everybody. What a catch. Nice, nice route. Yeah, nice throw by Estrada. Number 10, Lewis Andres and Perez. Perez on the catch. A great play. Kind of their staple play is just a flood route. They've got somebody in the flat, somebody intermediate, and they've got a deep receiver. We've seen so much tonight. <laughs> We've seen it all. So 
an exciting comeback would fit perfectly. First and goal from the nine. Estrada all alone in the backfield. Two to the right, three to the left. Estrada steps up, sees a lot of generals. Can he get in? Will he get in? He does. Touchdown. Boy, did he make that look easy. Yeah, he did. Under duress, a couple of moves, and then he kind of jogged in. Touchdown, Thunderbirds. I'm kind of thinking that was a play, a called play. He goes five wide, quarterback draw, which is typical off that. Especially a good runner like Estrada. Here's the PAT, high snap, gets it down in time, and it goes through. We will take.